I'm Gidai Tegani, and I'm going to show you Mepton Island OT Cybersecurity Test Lab. We're going to see how it works, how it's built, the value of it and the uniqueness of it, and then see it in action. So the first thing to understand is that this test lab is a unique integration piece, which combines three key elements. One is actually a manufacturing flow. It takes a real pneumatic process and actually brings it here to the lab environment. But it's a real process made of all the real components you will find out there in the real world in the industry. That's one element. The second element is actually generating the real attacks, real cyber attacks on those components. We'll see what, what it does to the mechanical process. And the third element is actually the monitoring system, detection and monitoring systems, which will identify the attacks and be able to see the attack is happening. All of it was, of course, built for training purposes. So it's built for training environment, but it's a real, real process, real attacks and real monitoring. And that's what makes it very unique. And that's why we call it a test lab and not, for example, a simulator. Even though it's a common name, we're not simulating, we're actually running on a real environment, real attacks, and using real tools to see what actually happens in those environments. So let's start. It's gonna be loud, and it's delivered. You can hear the compressor, and the synth, and the piston. That's a normal pace. The compressor is, is making sure that there's enough air pressure in the in the process, it will stop when it reaches the right level. You can also see that, again, we monitor the actual levels and we can see that the air pressure going up and down as, as needed on the actual, in the actual process. Okay, that's normal process. Things are running okay. Now we're gonna run attack number one on the process and see what happens. We're gonna go to simple mechanism, simple interface here of running attacks. Number one, we're gonna interfere with the pace of the piston. I'll click, attack starts. You see immediately red lines are appearing because the attack is interfering with the communication protocol of in the PLC, which controls the piston. So that's the increase number one. Pace is quicker. And soon there'll be another increase over it. Yeah, very clearly. Much, much, much quicker. Yeah, and you see all the red lines coming up right here. And here you see the attack sending, connected and sending the frequency, sending the frequency to different uh, numbers. So you see it here, and directly affecting the PLC, which affects the process really quick. And then the LS coming in on the HMI and on the red light. Now we're going to run attack number two. We're going to suppress the red light over here. Let's run it. Number two, run. Run here. We change, basically we suppress the ability of that component to have the red light. We attack there, so even though the HMI was red, this is not showing it. So if you, a person is not close enough to the HMI in the factory, and sometimes people are not, have access to it, the remote connector, they don't know. We don't know now that, that there's, some, there's, there's an issue. Okay? We only know it on the HMI. But clearly, something is wrong. So we are blind in that element. Now we're going to make the HMI blind with attack number three. Let's try it again. I run it in addition, attack number three. Now we run another attack and we attack the HMI. Stop the HMI for showing the alert as well. Now there's no alert on the HMI and no alert on the light. So we are basically blind. We don't know what's happening. If we're looking at those elements and don't see the actual factory flow, we think everything is okay, because the picture we see here is fine. But in real life, in the factory flow, we have all of that happening. We may be completely unaware of that, right? And that can be, of course, very, very, very dangerous. Let's see what we see, the changes. Again, up and down, every time we made a change over there, we know exactly the level zero detectors always see what's happening exactly in, in there. So that was not hacked. And in general, the feedback we get usually is that this really, again, brings it to life to them and make, make the penny drops. Okay, now we get it, now we understand the risk involved. Now we understand what can we do about it. And it's a start of the process of actually, now let's go back to our own factory. What can we do?